Welcome to this webinar on Building for Builders. My name is Monica Ombogo. I'm a product manager at Microsoft, and I'm excited to be taking us through this session. The learning objectives for this webinar are one, we are hoping that you leave here with um, an understanding of how to apply the principles of product management to deliver high quality products for builders. We're going to define who builders are in the next few minutes. And we are also hoping that you'll be able to demonstrate an increased understanding and appreciation for the unique nuances of building products for builders. Um, so let's get started. Who are these builders and what exactly is this topic about? Um, typically, a product manager builds products for a group of users, and we're going to call that group end users for the purpose of this webinar. And end users typically are diverse, and the role of the product manager is to really define the product vision and the strategy of the product and the roadmap. Uh, the product manager is also tasked with conducting market research and also really managing the product life cycle. Um, the product manager also collaborates with people from different teams and ensures that you know, all the product features are delivered. It's also the role of the product manager to really monitor the performance of the product and ensure that it is hitting all the objectives that were set. And so that is a typical role of a product manager in a, in a typical a company. Uh, what we see that uh, happens sometimes is that the product manager will not just build for end users, consumer end users, if you might call it that. Um, sometimes the product manager or product manager might find themselves building for a group of users who are in turn building for other users. And the roles of the product managers, uh, pro product managers are still the same. They still need to define the product strategy, conduct research and all that stuff. But today we're going to look at what are those unique things that might differ or might uh, differ only slightly here um, when you compare building for an end user versus building for builders. And if you were to define the term builder, builder is any professional who is involved in the design, building, or maintenance of applications, system, and tools that in turn meet the needs of the end users. And um, we're going to give a few examples, right? So the first very big category are software developers, right? Software developers are oftentimes building for other people. And so um, you might be a product manager and you might be building tools that are going to be used by software developers who are in turn building for other folks. Um, and these software developers might be internal to your organization or they could be external. So we're going to look at two examples of that and see how they differ. So let's look at a hypothetical scenario here. Let's uh, imagine uh, a user called Anna, and Anna is an internal software um, developer, and she works within the company that the product manager also works in. And um, Anna in particular works on what we might call a low level uh, software component. And just to make it more concrete, we're going to assume that she works in uh, the virtualization space. So she's building virtualization software. This is going to help um, and enable multiple operating systems to be run concurrently within um, a single server or a single machine and helping the utilization of resources. Um, and so let's imagine for a second that we are actually building some tools for Anna to use, right? And, and the main question we're going to ask ourselves is how is building for Anna different from building uh, for consumer product, uh, for consumer uh, end users? And we're going to look at a few things. Um, let's first of all talk about the idea of a product market fit. So again, as a product manager, oftentimes you need to think about the product that you're building and whether it is meeting a real customer need, right? Um, and the one thing that here we need to, to really um, emphasize is that when you're designing for Anna, you are still designing for a user. And, um, and consequently, we still need to ask those questions. What is Anna's uh, needs? What are Anna's needs? What are her pain points? So that we can be able to answer that and build uh, a product that has features that meets uh, those needs. Um, we need to really offer a concrete value proposition, uh, very, very concrete to Anna. As much as if she's not a consumer end user, she is still um, a user. And therefore, we really, really need to focus on her needs. Also very, very important to note is the need to iterate based on feedback that Anna gives, right? So just again, Anna is not a consumer, uh, an end, um, a consumer end user. 
if we are to call it that. But we need to get feedback from her in terms of things like NPS, what is her customer satisfaction with the products that we build for her. Um, and we need to do that on a regular basis as we introduce different features to her. Um, and what are some of the things that might look different when you're looking at the product market fit in this scenario? Obviously, the size, right? You, you might not have as many annas um, as if, for example, you're building for consumer end users, right? So the size alone is smaller and you, um, the internal, the number of internal software developers that you may be building for are not as many as if you're building for um, an external audience. And obviously also, you know, again, when you're talking about product market fit, oftentimes you talk about things like uh, willingness for the customer to pay. Again, this might not really apply here, but what matters here is again, just looking at um, the value right? Because a lot of times willingness to pay is also pegged on the value that the product brings to the user. Really looking at whether this product is meeting the needs of the uh, of Anna and of the internal software developer. Um, and then just to look a little more uh, at Anna and look at, you know, again, the product life cycle. One of the main stages of product development is actually ideation, right? Coming up with ideas on what to build. Um, and one of the things that you might notice uh, as a product manager building for Anna is that you, you might notice that a lot of great ideas will actually come from your own internal engineering team. And that is because um, there's a greater empathy um, because your engineers or the engineers who are working uh, internally have been Anna. They have been uh, that person who's using some virtualization software to try and make sure that you know there's resource optimization. So they know what to look out for. They know that things like performance, security, good documentation, all these things really, really matter. And so the empathy that you will encounter, even as you are an advocate for Anna, Right, because a big role of a product manager is to be the advocate of the of the customer. A big uh, chunk of what you might face is that you know there will be greater empathy um, for Anna, and so it's it's interesting how things like brainstorming might look like because you'll be brainstorming with internal teams. Um, you know how prototyping might change and how even collection of early feedback. A lot of that might happen just within the team where this is being built. Um, and that this is, in my opinion, one of the benefits of building for builders because you don't have to go very far to even get like users. Um, you might have users right there on your own team. Um, and it also makes your job of advocating for um, for the customer a little easier because people get it. They have been the user, they have been the customer, and so they understand. Um, let's look at another example. Um, let's imagine a user called Andrew, and Andrew is an external uh, software developer, and um, Andrew is actually building um, tools using SDKs that we have provided um, and using an API that we have provided. Um, and let's assume that, you know, we have built some SDKs on top of that API to help, you know, people use um, the API using different pro programming languages. And again, the question that you're going to ask here is, is it different, you know, when we build for Andrew, is it different than if we build for somebody externally? And let's consider this idea of um, user journeys, for example, right? So a lot of times when you create a user journey, you start by creating a user persona. You identify this is um, the user, this is the journey they go through, this, um, this is these are their goals, their motivations, and their pain points. Um, and then you look at the goal, right? Where do they want to go? What what do they want to fulfill? What is their objective? And then you list the steps uh, between you know where they are and where they want to go. Um, and oftentimes we talk about uh, actions and touch points, right? And these are the two things that might vary slightly when you consider um, developer um, user journey as opposed to like an end user consumer user journey. The touch points might differ, right? Um, and the actions that they take might also differ slightly, but all we, all, um, ultimately there is a user journey and there is a developer journey that um, Andrew is going to go through. I think important to look at, uh, which is the same uh, across the board, whether you're looking at the user journey that uh, Andrew and other developers go through is considering the emotional state that they're in, where are they happy, where are they frustrated, where are they excited, where are they satisfied, and also identifying the pain points along that journey um, where they, they might encounter barriers and where they might encounter 
difficulties in achieving a, a certain objective. And all of this really helps us define the opportunities for improvement along that user journey and along that developer journey. So I think important to note here is that um, as much as you might have different actions and you might have different uh, touch points, it is important to really define that uh, developer journey and look at the different pain points and issues that, the, 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 that Andrew and other developers might face along the journey. And also let's look at definition of success, right? A lot of times, again, as we say, the role of a product manager is to look at um, the product and to really consider, um, you know, is it doing what it's supposed to be doing? And um, when you look at code fast users, if we, we might call it that versus UI fast users, the metrics are very different in terms of how you define success. And um, the Oftentimes, how we define success for things like APIs, for example, is not the same way we define success for a UI, a web UI. Um, but the point and, and the main thing that we might we, we might need to focus on is that we still need metrics to evaluate, you know, whether we are doing well or not doing well, right? I, and, but instead of looking at things like page views and um, and the average time that somebody spends on a page, we might be looking at, you know, how many calls are being made to a certain endpoint and such like um, metrics. So it's important to do that. Um, and and all additionally, it's also important to look at other metrics, right, that are not as quantitative, things like surveys and things like interviews that still matter and still cut across the board, um, both for UI fast users and code fast users. Um, and maybe to summarize and the key takeaway that I want us to leave this very short webinar with is that um, across all the development stages of um, of a product, you know, uh, such as ideation, um, you know, defining the product itself, prototyping, designing the initial prototype, etc. There are differences, there might be slight differences when you're building for end users and when you're building um, for, for, for um, builders if we had to call them that but ultimately the fundamental roles of a product manager still applies and so if you're a product manager and you've been building products for consumer markets and for end users i think the transition to building products for internal folks and for builders is not that um, difficult um, and it's not that complicated really um, it really is just a slight modification you just modify a few things here and there and some things will actually be easier so thank you very much.